Hey boys and girls, welcome back to Monroe Live. And we're standing in front of the RS1, uh, lovely blue. Hey boys and girls, welcome back to Monroe Live. We're standing in front of the um, R1S, uh, the, uh, the newest uh, addition here to the Rivian family. Um, as you know, I have a Rivian. I have an R1, uh, sorry, yeah, an R1T. Um, and uh, this, this has a lot of things that I really, really like about um, what Rivian's been doing with, uh, with their SUV. But before we get going, Corey, why don't you give us the specs on this thing? Yeah, so this has a shorter wheelbase. It has a 121 inch wheelbase versus the 135.8 inch wheelbase on the RT1, R1T. R1T. <laughs> See, keep going. Nah, we're yeah, not no. doing it again. Keep no, going. We'll do it again. <clears throat> um, so first of all, this thing has a shorter wheelbase, 121 inch wheelbase versus 135.8 inch wheelbase on Sandy's R1T. It has 835 horsepower, the same quad motor setup. And what else does it have? 128.9 kilowatt hour battery packs. So that's good for 316 miles of range. So that's more range than you get out of yeah, your R1T, yeah. isn't that? Yeah, it is. But we're gonna focus on the things that are different. So Sandy and I are gonna walk around to the rear because what do you got here? Well, hang you? on a second. No. We, we, we forgot to mention one thing. What? How much does this sucker cost? $91,075. That's yeah. the new starting price. Right. If you ordered it way back in the day, you get a different starting yeah. price. But right now, $91,075. And this thing is loaded with features. Yeah. So it's like unbelievable. So here's the thing. When we first looked at the original Rivian that came in, I walked around it and I said, this car should be selling for $90,000. 92 is what I said yeah. after, I, uh, after I had a, a deep look at it. This is selling for 91 and I believe that this is the right price. Now, um, I wore a blue shirt. <laughs> I wore a blue shirt. And normally I don't like blue, uh, but I do like this color. Now, so I would like to, I'd like to start yeah. just with the fact that the blue, the black, the black and blue, <laughs> and the white kind of really, it really goes together well. Yeah, when it comes to first impressions, we have a lot of EVs come in this building. We have Chinese EVs, we have domestic EVs, we have EVs from Korea, EVs Europe, Europe yeah. everywhere. This thing pulled in the, in, the, in the building, we have 50 or 100 people walk by it since we've got it, and it's a, it's a crowd stopper. People stop and they take photos with it, they come around and look at it. That's not always the case. So we do have other trucks that were in here, and there was one sitting right here, and people walked just right by it. So one thing we can say is it is a statement maker, and I like yeah. its stance. Yeah. It has these huge 34-inch tires on 20-inch wheels, uh, 275, 65R20s. I feel like they fill the wheel wells out really well. Yeah. So Sandy, you're more of the styling guy, but I like good proportion wheel tire package. Um, yeah. I'm not a big fan where you have uh, 22 inch wheels and really thin tires. Yeah. Um, so this is a nice, nice uh, setup for me. What do you think, Sandy? Well, here's the deal. Um, we already talked about the, uh, the nose of this car several times. So I'm not gonna go in that direction. But there's a thing called divine proportion, and that's what this has got. It's, it just is extremely appealing to the eye. This, uh, this layout, I, I just can't get over. Now, I'm gonna tell you a secret. Um, in the past, when people have brought up um, three rows of seating and things like that, I usually get really disgusted. I say it's a waste of time and money, but I'll tell you flat, I actually, when I started looking at this a little while ago, I made the statement, you know what? I really seriously consider turning in my pickup for this. And the reason for that, you're gonna see in a little while when we start showing you the ingress and egress for this car and the fact that yes, it does have a, 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 a rear seat, a third seat, a third row seat, and it actually is usable. I can actually sit in it and people would be comfortable being in this car. So um, do you want to do the seats or you want to do the back? We'll do the back first and All right. do the seats Let's next. go and have a look. So talk about the roof lines. So this yeah. is a popular styling trend to go black roof. 
I yeah. think Land Rover started that with some long of their, time ago. a long yeah. time ago. Now you see the Ford Explorer, some Lincolns, a lot of vehicles go with the black roof. Yeah. I think it's more costly in some aspects, but then you get commonality across all your colors. What's your thought yeah. there? Well, it on? isn't, it, it's not more costly, but um, with that chrome trim piece, which I would cheerfully ditch, but anyway, with that chrome piece, that, that, makes, uh, that makes it so, oh boy, now I can have a mistake. So right here, you see that there's a slip joint and uh, you can see that there's a lot of things happening in this little corner right here. I would probably ditch that just because I'd want the clean look. I don't need to have a style line to tell me that there's an arch going here. If that was gone, this would be less expensive to manufacture. Now, a I'm, lot less amazing. I'm old school and I like satin chrome. To me, this isn't chrome, this is called satin chrome. Yeah. It also matches the badge as well as the badge on the rear, yeah. R1S and the Rivian here. If you're gonna do chrome, I prefer the satin look. It's more of a muted kind of soft touch versus that old school abrasive chrome chrome. So I like satin chrome. I drive a vehicle with satin chrome all over it and everybody on the forums for the vehicle I drive deletes it. They take it all off, they, they, they paint it black or plasti dip it or whatever. I don't know what I, Sandy and I disagree on there, but I like this. I think it makes it pop because if it was just black, I think the roof would disappear into the window. That's my opinion there. Well, I don't like anything, any heavy metal. So uh, it's going to be tough for me to, uh, to jump in and say I like chrome when I really don't because I've t actually, um, we made comments on it on the Teslas and uh, it was like overnight the stuff was gone. Uh, chrome is not your best friend if you're trying to save the planet. Now, Sandy at Monroe, we benchmark hundreds of vehicles over the past decade, hundreds. And SUVs is the biggest market in the United States. Right. So there's a lot of really nice large SUVs out there. The new uh, Grand Wagoneers, the new Grand Cherokees, some of the high-end Lincolns are loaded with features. This vehicle, in my opinion, is comp comparable with some of the higher-end vehicles. Even the Land Rovers, yeah. particularly when we look at the split gate. So, Sandy, you want yeah. to talk about the split gate? So, here's the deal. Um, first off, um, Corey's going to pop it open. Oh, here it goes. Yeah. There's a button, right? Yeah, I know where it is. Um, so, the split gate's kind of a nice idea. I like this uh, a lot because it gives me a little bit of a tailgate. And that little bit of tailgate is just enough if you're trying to load something that's relatively heavy into the, the back end of the vehicle. Now, the reason I don't care for third road seating as a rule is because it gets in the way of storage. And I've always found that pretty much everybody that's got a third row seat, you can't put a real adult in it. There's no six foot guy is ever gonna crawl in, but this one, this does have, a, it does have access. So when the seats are folded down, let me just do that. When the seat's folded down, I can actually kind of use this space. And it goes flat. That's it important. Does. That some of them, yeah. they have a compromise where they'll be at an angle where there's some interference. Yeah. So that is a nice feature. Right. And this, this to me is, is good enough for me to say, hey, you know what? Already I can see storage that mm, means I can actually use this thing. But, but uh, uh, these... Uh, these hooks. Oh my gosh. I, I can't hardly believe this. Uh, I've never, I've never seen this as a built-in option ever. Usually this is something that you're going to see uh, dealers put in or an in, in, in aftermarket, aftermarket. Yeah. So because it's so damned expensive. How many, how many, I don't even know how many that's stations. Gotta, that's got to be 50 to $70 for that rail. Just right that there. rail, Just yeah. Rail. That, this is really expensive because it's machined underneath. See, each one of these different areas, see, you can hear it clicking in. Look at how close they are. I mean, geez, this, this is all done yeah. with a very fancy little mill. It's called a back mill or, uh, uh, anyway, you go in and you come up, dit, 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 and you're, you're machining backwards. It's hard to get rid of the chips you wind up with a lot of scrap because sometimes what happens is as the cutter's going through, it pulls the chips in twice and it, it'll leave scratches on the bottom surface here. This is 
le really difficult, but it's really well done. Yeah, I got to tell you, I would buy this yeah, and, as an option. I, and the fact that Rivian is giving this to their customers from the yeah. factory, including a lot of these high-end features. So you still have an air compressor here. Yeah. The cost of this air compressor is astronomical. You don't see this in any other SUVs, no. even in this price class. And then for your third row, you have flip-up storage with a USB-C charger. And the flip-up storage isn't just hard plastic. It's a nice wrapped yeah. uh, wrapped armrest plus a wrapped bolster right there. Yeah. This is something that you see in the most high-end vehicles, like a Grand Wagoneer or a Range Rover, Land range, Rover, long yeah, wheelbase. This, this, is, this is comparable to anything that's on the market right now for a tremendous amount and of money. Another thing I like, Sandy, look up here. You have quad lights pointing in two directions because oh, sometimes you struggle with yeah. lighting here. Yeah. And this is something that I like from the Rivian engineers, no grab handle. So oftentimes you'll see OEMs put two grab handles even if it's powered to allow someone to, to pull it down. If you're gonna reach up and you can reach anyways, Put your fingerprints on the outside because it's not intended to do that way. I like the fact there's no costly grab handle. It's something that in cost reduction workshops, we've fought to go from two to one or from two complex to one integrated. They don't even have any. Um, yeah. So that's actually kind of nice. So then we get down here and we've got storage and storage. So you, you can see here that you've got it's a got wheel. A, it's got a spare tire. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I noticed that last time because I, I like to see what's going on. Nobody does this. Uh, nobody that I can think of anyway. So right now, that all by itself is, is kind of a big deal. And you know, this is a run flat. So anyway, no, no, it's, it's an a, inflatable. It is? Well, yeah, then, a, then you've got the stuff here and you've got the stuff here. So you've got everything you need, I guess, if you wanted to change a tire. But at the end of the day, I doubt very much if I'm going to ever, um, with a car like this, and the, if I'm spending this much money, yeah. I'll bet you dollars to donuts. I'd be phoning a, a somebody else to come. I don't know away. if the spare is optional, but a lot of OEMs are making the spare tire optional, where you pay yeah, an extra more to money. dealer installed. But the inflatable spare—that's something that's been pretty prevalent on uh, European OEMs. I know my wife had a small Mercedes GLK 350, yeah. and that had an inflatable spare mm. because they didn't have enough room to pack. So it what did they do? Put a bottle in there, and you? It, it had a it had a little bottle with, I think a little bottle you plugged into the, a little compressor you plugged into the oh, 12 really? volt, mm. and you comp you blew it up. Well, I like this thing better, but let's let's swing around here and have a look at one of the other features I like. So it's easy to access and fold down those seats, but not so easy over there. So you got this this little feature, which I really like. Now, from the back, when I'm standing there with whatever it is that I've got to put in place and it's big, look at that. This thing, uh, I wouldn't do it, but I bet you I could throw plywood in here. Uh, I mean, this is a really, really functional SUV, except for what normally I would classify as the, uh, the biggest drawback to uh, third row seating, and that's how do I get in and out. So. That is what I'd like to talk about next because this this actually this actually works. So let's uh, let's have a let's have a peek. This video is sponsored by Detroit Denim. Detroit Denim offers made-to-order quality garments to fit you perfectly, get better with age, and can be repaired. Great jeans start with great materials, and Detroit Denim takes exceptional care in sourcing high-quality fabrics, threads, and hardware. They approach sustainability from two angles, production and consumption. Detroit Denim uses a lean manufacturing philosophy. Like a vehicle jet supplier, just in time, they produce less by never making a pair of jeans until a customer asks for it. This means zero waste from overproduction. Detroit Denim helps you consume less by creating heirloom quality garments designed to be a versatile and meaningful addition to your wardrobe. You don't need a lot of jeans. You really just need a few great pairs. Go to DetroitDenim.com and book your virtual fitting today. 
Get 10% off your first order using the discount code Monroe. So uh, let's pop these things up. And so first off, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into the back seat. And, and quite frankly, it's easy. Um, now, you get in and you, you look in here and that looks like plenty enough room for, for me anyway to get into this car. Let's, let's say I want to have somebody get into the um, third row seat. So, so we've got this little feature here. You push the button at the top and it slides forward. Um, you can pull this back and you can actually put it flat, but I found it easier just to get in with this because it gives me, uh, it gives me something to hold on to when I'm trying to get into that third row. So I'm about um, now somewhere between 5'9 uh, and 5'10. Um, so I'm not a giant by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm old, still a little agile, but still old. Let's see <laughs> how easy it is to get into this thing. Okay, so now I'm in. Let's see where my, whoops, let's see where my legs are. I can't do it from here, somebody else. Okay, so that's fully forward. Now I'm in, I can, we can move it back and we can move it back. So let's say that that's as far back pretty much as it can go. And I've got four inches of leg room on both sides. Now. And then you uh, want me to get in front of you, Sandy? I'll what? sit right here. I can sit right here. Look yeah, at this. why don't you jump in? I'm also 5'10". And the seat's pretty far back, and I still have three to four inches of leg room right here. Um, and and you, you can tip it. So yeah. why don't you bring it back to where it would be comfortable for you? I think uh, that just moves oh, yeah. it around. I think it's, well, it's right here. Yeah. yeah. Say when. Go ahead. I, I like. So now he's all the way back. I still have enough room to move my knees. I, I can't believe that a third row seat, and it's not bad, this is comfortable. I could actually go for a ride in this thing. It's got, it's got good back support. I'm, I'm really, I'm very excited about this. And you this. have your own power and your armrest. Yeah, and I do. I got my own power. And I got my own uh, cup holder. And here's uh, something that's nice, Sandy, watch this. So let's say you're riding with four adults. You have one, two, three, four. You could go back there. I could move over here. You could then move this one forward. Here. Oh. Well, now I can do it from here. Yeah, you, know, you could. Let me, let me do, do it from here. So, so we've got. Just push it. Yeah. You could move that one forward, and I could move this one back. That's as far oh. back as you can go, yeah. I think. Right here. So then you could relax, and I could relax. So you could even yeah. alternate it. Yeah, which so is you nice. Could, basically, I think you could sleep back here. I. Like I'm telling you, right now, that may, this has got that, great back support. For a back seat, I, this, is, this is pretty damn good. Now, and I got my own vent. I didn't notice that until just now. So I got a vent coming out of the B, a C pillar right here. Or, yeah, C pillar. I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. I, uh, I sure hope that the, uh, the other uh, car manufacturers are going to be looking hard at this because I think we've got a, a kind of like a new benchmark here for uh, now, SUVs. There are a lot of great third rows. So this one is pretty high feature. We've looked at a lot of them. Um, so we'll rely on a little bit more of an in-depth look at that yeah. uh, when we bring Jordan in because Jordan's seen all of them. He's benchmarked yeah. a lot of the third yeah. row SUVs. But this one your first experience is not something that you we see a lot for you no uh normally when we bring in something that's got a third row seat they say sandy don't bother because i'm just gonna whittle all over it i don't like it i usually uh i tell people that if there's a third row seat then it's made for either really small children or uh people with no legs and, and quite frankly, uh, on this particular vehicle, I think Rivian's done a fine job. Mm -hmm. um, again, this is way over featured compared to what I would have been expecting. This is kind of like, uh, 
like I say, Range Rover features, BMW yeah. kind of features. And here's what's good news for Rivian. They're serving the customer first. So if you're a customer and you have one on order, you're getting a ton of vehicle for the money. A An ton of vehicle. outrageous amount, yeah. So you will enjoy your vehicle. But when you're, if you're a shareholder, you have to look at the positive. There's upside because you could make a more Spartan version of this. Lower end materials, less yeah. features to bring the price point down. And I think they're already coming out with the dual motor version instead of the quad motor. Yeah. One with a smaller battery. But the, the amount of, of, of beautiful stitching and leather and materials, well, and it's this just is all exquisite. El I mean, really, yeah. I can't even hardly believe it. Nobody does that um, anymore. So, so there's opportunity for you know, a more utilitarian version of an yeah. R1S. Yeah, a decontented, yeah. yeah. But uh, I'm telling you right now, um, this car is now priced at 91,000. This is priced uh, to the right value. Uh, so kudos to Rivian for jacking a price up. Um, I know that people don't like it. Oh, I want a cheap car. Well, if you want a cheap car, then buy go and buy something car. else. But, uh, but for the people who can afford it, and this thing will last. Oh, by the way, um, I've been spending uh, quite a bit of time abroad and listening to uh, basically the giant lies that, that go around all the time. These cars are not going to wear out in 100,000 miles. I'm not sure what marketing company came up with that, but that's baloney. We've got, we've got plenty of people with uh, 500, 600, 700, and up to a million, a million miles on, a, on an electric vehicle with the same battery. Those days or those kinds of conversations have got to stop. This car is gonna last somebody forever. And later this week, Jordan and I are gonna do a review tailored to car seats and children. So yeah. I have two children, he has one child, and we're gonna talk about kids getting in and out. This doesn't have a sidestep, which my kids use religiously every day. Um, how the, where the car seats fit, how a little child can get to the back, but that's more specific usage, yeah, yeah. not Sandy's opinion. And yeah. also, we, do you want to get out and wrap up? Let's hop out. Well, actually, up. while we're talking about children, I just want to um, uh, shout out to my uh, my wonderful uh, daughter Hejin, who had a baby um, last night. Uh, little Elizabeth is 100% uh, okay. She got a 10, which means that the doctors at the time thought that everything was good. So, um, so anyway, um, Alistair, Hejin, Alexander, and now Elizabeth. Hi. <laughs> it's grandpa <laughs> so we want to thank rivian for providing yeah. this vehicle this, yeah, this is, is a ours. this is a press vehicle from rivian so it's beautiful it was well prepared when it was yeah. dropped off so thank you to rivian we also want to thank detroit denim they're a new sponsor of ours so these jeans are from detroit denim our team went down to their factory in detroit and filmed how they make their jeans really quite an impressive company um, so it's nice to be loved by a local company and i think Sandy, yours are on the way. These were custom made for me. They have my name inside. Um, I think they're really nice. Well, uh, the other thing too is they make them out of uh, denim that uh, is normally gone into the scrapper. Yeah, which, uh, old which stock, is, some yeah. old stock selvage denim. But I think we're gonna go into, into detail about that. So thank you to Detroit Denim for sponsoring really all the talent on the channel. I think we got six or eight pairs of jeans for many of the people yeah. who show up on our videos. So thanks yeah. to them. Any last remarks, Sandy? No, I, uh, I, I think I've pretty much said it all. I, uh, I really like the vehicle. I think uh, it's not often I give out A's. I didn't give an A out to the, uh, to the, to the pickup truck, uh, but I, I gotta tell you, I was surprised in, in a good way with a lot of the features and functions that they've got here. I, uh, I think Rivian, uh, I think this, Somebody asked me uh, what I thought of it this morning, and I went crazy and said, uh, you know what, I'd consider dumping my truck, my pickup truck for this. Um, and I'm still, you know, I'd have to think about it and talk to Sue about it, but <laughs> this is pretty yeah. good. You had a Jeep for a long time. 13, yeah. And this is more like a Jeep and less like a truck. This is not like, uh, like my, my Wrangler. Um, these things are way more comfortable, way more comfortable. Um, but I think it's a better off-roading experience. Oh, yeah. I know the, uh, my, uh, my truck, uh, 
there's nothing I've ever had like it ever for off-roading yeah. ever. So, so, and with same air suspension with 15 yeah. inches of ground clearance. Right. So yeah. not only can get real low, like when you pull in the parking lot here with your R1T, it's always real low for egress. Right. It always, it always looks real nice. Yeah. And then you can get real high for off-roading. So. Right. So I'm, I'm pretty happy. This is, this, I'm, I'm very happy uh, with uh, what Rivian's uh, cranked out here today. So anyway, thanks for watching. Um, we're probably going to have some more. Uh, Corey and Jordan will be, uh, Crawling all over it, probably putting yeah. on the, the seats and stuff like that. And one last thing, Sandy's on Twitter now. Successful <laughs> launch. He has yeah. almost 31,000 followers in one week. Yeah. So if you're on YouTube here and you have Twitter, follow him at Teardown Titan. Teardown yeah. Titan, which was a name that was given to him by Lindsey Brook for the SAE. Yeah. Is that the correct? The SAE magazine, yeah. They, they called him the Teardown, Teardown Titan. Titan. So for all the other OEMs, <laughs> You better get one of these real fast and you better find out how you can do something like this even at that price um, and you better do it in a hurry so anyhow that's the warning to everybody else thanks for watching and uh, we'll be uh, like i say corey and uh, and jordan are going to be coming at you with some new stuff and so we'll be looking forward to that